Good morning, y'all. My name is Rachel. Um, I am a fairly new gardener. I've been gardening for about three years. Um, and before I got into gardening, I literally knew nothing about gardening. I got into it after the birth of my last kid because I needed a hobby that was around the house. And um, before that, I just thought I killed plants. That's all I knew about plants is that I killed them. Um, and now uh, I am a complete gardening uh, addict. I cannot <laughs> cannot keep out of the garden. Um, I love I love it so much. Um, but I noticed there wasn't I couldn't really find a channel uh, on YouTube for gardeners who were in Central Texas, which is where I'm at. And this is my own home right here in my backyard, um, Central Texas, uh, Zone uh, 8B, and um, one of my big gardening projects actually isn't here at my own home, it's at my in-laws house. They have about um, an acre and a half or so in their backyard. That was just a blank space and last winter, um, I'll be sure to post pictures of what it looked like beforehand, um, but last winter it was there was nothing there and I've been dreaming of doing something because they have so much sun um, back there. Um, it's just all sun. There's like hardly any trees and I just wanted to do stuff with it and they said go for it. And so um, my own backyard is just like complete shade pretty much and um, I don't get any of the beautiful sun plants that I love working with um, and so now I get to do that there so I'll take y'all there here in just a moment but um, the land there is incredibly hard clay there's so many rocks just like rocks everywhere huge slabs to like little tiny rocks like I can't use an earth auger at all there's just rocks galore there and hard clay and there's snakes and there's um, fire ants everywhere and it's just a very hostile environment <laughs> but to garden in but I am slowly turning it into a flower garden and I want it to be um, a place where there's big trees and lots of um, uh, lots of plants that support wildlife birds and bees and all that and I think it's getting there. So uh, I will take y'all there to look around here in just a moment. Okay, so here are my two little helpers. Can y'all say hi? Hi. <laughs> uh, this is the property that we're planting things on. There's, you can't see them really, but there's little baby trees I've planted all out here, some over here and over there. So hopefully those will grow up nice and tall and big you found a little plant growing through there yeah. so i this uh, is all new here for, i did this in the winter of last year it's a tiny plant that's right um and i need to obviously do a lot of weeding because i was so busy doing other things um and this is this is what kind of one of the first things that i did here and so i put a trellis up just now with the kiddos and that's a Don Juan rose, climbing rose, um, that's gonna go over that trellis. I have a um, golden rain tree out there trying to plant a lot of natives and um, adaptives and I just love this pop of color of lantana. So back here is gonna be yellows and reds and oranges most of the time and my flowers that I pick. And then this front part is going to be um, pinks and purples and blues and whites and stuff. Okay, so here's the pathway I built. I just finished it maybe like two months ago. And the kids, Grandma, we call her Ma. She's taking the kids to eat a snack right now. But I have a baby mimosa tree right out here and it gets those pink puffy flowers and I've always loved those so I know it's not native but I, I love it <laughs> um, so I obviously need to water this one this is the sky flower it comes back from root every time there's a I think that's kidney wood out there and I have another one over on this side those are native um, and then over there I planted a baby um, Eve's necklace tree 
and then we've got some native rock rose. I think I'm gonna do a whole section of just wildflower rock roses. This is native coneflower um, that's looking kind of sad right now. Uh, I got some sunshine ligustrums. This is, I always mispronounce this as some kind of orchid tree, but it's a native, I think. That's also a native. That's pampas grass with pink plumes. I'm very excited about it. This is a I don't remember what that is. And then I killed a plant here. It's wonderful. Um, <clears throat> I got several of these knockout roses, which I know everyone plants knockout roses, but I love this. It's like the coral knockout rose. It's so vibrant and pretty. And then I have a pink one over here. It's just gorgeous. Uh, I am planning on ordering some knockout roses from I mean, not knockout roses, some regular roses from the Antique Rose Emporium here in Texas. This is, um, gosh, um, Desert Willow. And then I got Shoal Creek Vitex there. And this is a Rose of Sharon that's taken, just planted. Um, this is a, God, I forget what this is. What's this? Uh, oh, Japanese Snowbell Tree and they get these beautiful white flowers. I'm very excited about this. This is some artwork, metal artwork from this guy. I believe his name was Omar and I love it. I absolutely love it. That's one of my favorite things I've gotten. There's a um, butterfly bush that's gonna get pretty tall. Um, I plant a lot of Mexican sage. As you can see out here, tons of Mexican sage. Um, this is the pink version right there, and a lot of salvias here. I need to still, um, come in and, uh, all this will be mulched and, uh, like a proper bed. You can see I started to do the proper bed. It's like the other side's finished, but this side's still kind of a bit of a wild mess. And then I'll probably have pathways going through so that I can get to other areas of the garden but um, this is a crepe myrtle I think it has pink blooms I just really don't remember these are bush crepe myrtles here you can barely see them <laughs> against the grasses that are taking over everywhere and then I have um, another um, yeah, where are words failing me another uh, uh, desert willow thank you gosh uh, and then a bunch of drift roses around this kind of dry riverbed that I made and some more um, <clears throat> uh, Rose of Sharon plants they're big double petal I think they're like chiffon ones I think is what they're called that one's the peppermint one over there I'm really excited about this one I think this one has purple ones or blue this one's blue it's like blueberry or something and that one's um got blue or purple ones and then these are the drift roses they're in different like whites and kind of i kind of did whites pinks white pink white pink and that one is actually not a drift rose that is a cinco de mayo rose and i have two of those at my own house and i i get i put it put them in my front yard which is the only place i get sun and i absolutely love them they bloom non-stop they're gorgeous He's a little butterfly bush. The blooms have been really fat and cute. This is another Shoal Creek Vitex. This is an Amistad Salvia. And I think these get really huge and it's beautiful. I love it. I saw it um, at the, um, what is it? The, the garden place, the botanical gardens here in Austin. I saw one and I was blown away by it. It was probably like six feet tall or something. I don't know, it was insane and it was gorgeous. Um, I think that's basil and then I, I definitely plant some herbs in and then this is the woolly, I'm probably mispronouncing this, woolly stem boda? I don't know. And then uh, I have the trailing purple lantana in several spots. I love this artemisia I think is what it is. And then this is some type of salvia or sage. I have no idea what the name is, but um, I love it. And 
my mother-in-law really loves it too. So if I ever find any more, I'm buying a bunch more of those. And then I have the big lamb's ear over here. And I planted several types of rosemary. This one has done phenomenal. And I don't remember what variety it is. I had two different ones on the side. Both of them, the middle died out on it. I'm not sure what that was about, but this one has done amazing. So this will become like a little tree and kind of partially shade this whole area, that little Shoal Creek Vitex there. And then I have ah, a bee. Hi. The, okay. The bees are really loving this um, Russian sage here. I also love Russian sage. Here's my first um, woolly st stimboda. Stim I don't know what it's called. Uh, that I planted and it's really growing into this space. Um, I planted it at the beginning of this year and then I have some uh, basil, I believe, and then blackfoot daisy, which is a native. Greg's mist flower is also native and then I have several patches of the trailing lantana. So, and then I did a little kind of, I'm going to plant some more stuff to kind of fill in the bare patches, but that's like an, one of those, I think it's called ice rose or something. I'm not sure. I think it gets pretty tall though. Um, but the blooms are just absolutely beautiful. And then I have, since I planted things up, oh my God, there's bees all over this. This is awesome. I love it. Okay. <laughs> I hear my son screaming in the background. Um, I planted a lot of things and then I realized I didn't have enough pinks in here because I really wanted pinks um, to be in here a lot and pinks and whites as well and there's just not enough of those so I'm going to come back in and plant some you can see on that lantana over there so there's some hot pink and I really like it. This was I threw a bunch of seeds around with the kids during winter time and this is I, I believe it's a cosmos so this just grew up and I just kind of let it do its thing. And it's been beautiful, constant bloomer here. Um, I really like it a lot. You can see my ornamental onions are blooming. And I love those. I'm gonna plant probably the more of them around here and make it a little thicker with those. So anyhow, this is kind of where it's at right now. And there's a lot of projects to complete. I'm doing a little fish art for my dry, um, my dry stream bed that I love. There's bees all over this plant too. I don't remember what this is right now, but I'm loving it. And I've got a lot of projects. There's a couple more plants to plant over there. I've got a lot of projects to do. I also work in the front yard, um, but I have a big problem with deer out there. They, they put in a deer fence here on this property. Um, this, uh, the beginning of this year and before that the deer were eating everything. I mean, like you would like agaves, they would eat agaves that had thorns down the sides of the leaves and stuff like that. They just couldn't keep them off of anything. Another knockout rose. I just really love those colors and the black and blue salvia, which I think will go really cool with the knockout rose once that grows and takes in this space. And yeah, that arbor will hopefully be covered with flowers at some point <laughs> next year. But oh, this is, um, I think it's called Fragrant Mimosa. It's got thorns all down it, but I love, it's very thorny. I love the foliage on it and it is a native and it gets these puffy light pink flowers, kind of like the mimosa tree that I planted over there, but this one's a, this one's a native and light, lighter pink instead of that kind of more hot flamingo pink that the other one has. And then I have some guara down at the base of it, which really needs to be weeded. Um, anyhow, so yeah, deer were a huge problem. They were eating everything. And we put up a, um, a, um, a deer fence and it was awesome. Cause they, <laughs> it's been awesome. <laughs> and then that over there is a giant, Big tree that my husband's grandpa planted and when we had the big frost it died all the way to the ground at the beginning of the year and then this is how big it's gotten just in this year it's amazing okay 
So I'm gonna have a lot of projects and I hope to take y'all along with my planting if anyone's <laughs> interested. I don't know if they are, but um, this is for Central Texas Gardening and Zone 8B and rocky clay soil. And uh, the, oh, I forgot to mention none of this side has irrigation. I think that has some sprinklers that kind of hit it a little bit. For, for the most part, everything has taken off simply due to natural rainfall. So in the proper planting times. So since it's a good time right now in October to plant these things, I'm going to be planting a lot more and I'll try to post videos of that. All right. Thanks for joining me. Bye.